George North steps back inside. He's over the try line. Has he got the ball to down? George North. No, no. Liam Williams, has he got the ball down? Referee says no, it's held up. No, it's held up. I can't take any more of this challenge. Two weeks I've been up here. This is just unbelievable. Wales come up short again, and now they're going to have to do it the hard way if they want their name on the Webb Ellis Trophy. They're going to have to do it the hard way. We'll go back to the panel very shortly after Sean Holly tells us how the Springboks can be beaten. It's knockout rugby time and a second World Cup semi-final in a row beckons if Wales can beat South Africa. It's a tall order, but as Wales showed last autumn, it's not insurmountable. Last November, defence won the day for Wales. It will require heart, desire and courage against the box. And fitness will tell. The backline will need huge line speed in order to snuff out the centre threat of Creel and Deolande. Low tackles and a ferocious contact area has been the theme of this Rugby World Cup and it'll be no different next week. Wales may go to the air, a tactic they used against Australia and last autumn they varied their attacking options. Wales have shown good tactics in the past, exploiting weakness at the front of the line-out, putting more men close to the line in the line-out and after failing to score against Australia they'll need to be more savvy in this department. Now Wales have come under pressure in the scrums, but they can take confidence from past performance. Samson has dealt with the beast before. But Wales will need to show the referee some good pictures. Look how he goes to give one decision, and then when Wales get on top, he gives the correct decision. With yet another injury, this time to Liam Williams, surely George North will resort to the wing leaving the selection dilemma of a young Tyler Morgan at centre or, my personal preference, the temptation of the experienced James Hook.